county case that I believe, Mr. Chairman. Oh, excuse me. The county is. Excuse me. Yes, sir. All right, our first county case was actually one that was tabled last month to allow staff some additional time uh, to do some research and to get some documentation back to you, and hopefully you see that reflected within uh, the packets that you do have. Ultimately, the one document that was the main update was the survey, and what you see on your screens now is the survey that we had last month showing that older um, kind of NWI wetland line, and then you have the new survey showing the actual delineated wetlands on the property. Uh, beyond that, and I'll try to address questions you may have based on the information within your packets, the only update that I would offer since uh, we've been together at the work session has been that the county engineer and I did go out and do a site visit on the property. We were out there this afternoon with Mr. Wilmer just to try to walk around um, and see the property, see Mr. Cliff's property, as well as look at the animals, where they were situated, etc. Um, I can tell you that what I anticipate is for Mr. Wilmer to talk to the commission uh, about a fenced-in area that is similar to what is depicted on the screen right now in yellow. Um, from the site visit, I can confirm that larger area in the middle is um, completely fenced in. When it juts up to the north, that is currently not fenced in. Um, but certainly, I think that appeared to be kind of the active animal use area on the property. And, so that goes directly behind the two houses that Ms. Callis owns, and then directly up north of that ditch. And so we walked all over that property today just to get a better feel for it, but the only thing that I feel like that map doesn't show you, which Mr. Wilmer will talk, talk about in just a few minutes, is it doesn't show you that fenced-in area. That fenced-in area is dominantly the part that is behind those two houses. So beyond those two updates, I know that I had a comment and question about well, Jason, can you talk just briefly about the EA versus the RA on this property? And what I would share with you is the uh, EA zoning designation uh, will basically allow for livestock without any restrictions. So there's no restrictions on fencing or how close the animals can be to a property line. You could have a property line, uh, a fence, and, uh, and livestock. When you go to RA, <coughs> within your packets, there's a small table it talks about um, the buffer that's in place, which would be 150 feet from the yellow areas uh, on the zoning map, which are R10, and it would say basically the, the property has some fencing requirements. So what the RA gives you is some additional standards. The EA gives you completely uh, complete freedom to do the livestock. You could, of course, you could, of course, impose conditions on either one of those should you choose. But otherwise, I think that is the only update that I've had. It's just a better understanding about where that wetland line is and where they're actually using the property for livestock as it currently existed. Okay. Uh, I will ask the people wishing to speak in favor of this request first, the people wishing to speak in favor. I might add that you have a total of 10 minutes per <coughs> side, both pro and con. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Mr. Wilmer. No, Chuck. Mr. Wilmer gave us a presentation that he'd like okay. to do. My name is Wilmer J. Callis. My address is 2755 Alexander Street, by Austin, Georgia. I've been a resident of Austin for almost 12 years exactly, since uh, 2005. Uh, I'm on your screen to have uh, my presentation of uh, the property. Uh, I'm requesting to rezone the property uh, to E8 and take out the people. Uh, the, end of the, the end request is to rezone all 13.6 uh, acres of property to uh, E8. And uh, we also have a with condition uh, with conditional use to improve the quality of the property and possibly build a home uh, in the near, nearby future. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank also, with other restriction uh, conditions, I've spoken to some of the neighbors for concerns. We are uh, asking for the zone with conditions for no cattle, no uh, pigs, uh, or anything that might have affect the property owner uh, nearby or the, or the land itself. Um, we did have a uh, concern to have a cow or a calf with us, but um, if we have with conditions, we will gladly come to Currently on the property, we have uh, we have 
two ponies, one horse, um, we're down to a couple of chickens, two turkeys, and three goats, and about, I'd say, a dozen of ducks. A dozen. Um, these are the properties and where they start on the, um, the street, starting from the left to the right. Um, this is uh, Mr. Mike Hughes' house. Um, the whites are here. And we're going to move over. We're going to see on the left hand side that you have Mr. Hines' uh, property, uh, which was uh, also signed by the current renter. Um, on the left hand side is the same Bishop's house, and the current renter also signed over for the approval. This is a picture um, giving you a background view of the property, the road 27 to 5, 27 to 57, which is owned by his road house, my mother. Here is one of the property posts on the beginning of Mr. Clifford's house. And this is Clifford's house. And this here on the left hand side of uh, the, the property of Mr. Clifford, and the right hand side is the southern part of the Acre and 13 acres beginning into the property. Uh, we're going to walk through the about 4.7 uh, acres of the property, not uh, going into the farthest, uh, I believe, farthest eastern side of the property where uh, the ditch lies. And we'll start with the front half walking through. This uh, is on the right hand side, so the southern part of uh, the town property, and the left hand side of the uh, property. This here is the divider between the property of Clifford and the 13 acres. There's a, about, I'd say, six feet clearance, five, six feet clearance uh, walk in between. And there is a natural, not a natural barrier, but a handmade uh, fallen down tree uh, barrier which uh, restricts any movement from any parties uh, back and forth. Since the southern part of the acres is not accessible. Uh, you'll we'll see the uh, back property of 2757, and on the left hand side, you'll see the, the tree uh, barrier that's made so far. Um, this is telling where the current uh, horses um, eat and normally walk around. On your left hand side, you'll see one of the chicken coops that we have. Um, this is an area that is delineated as non wetland within the, within the property. On the left hand side, you will see an end of the house, um, and where what you see there is what it used to look like on the back property, um, as to what it now looks like on the right hand side property, uh, beginning uh, at the 13th. Uh, There's another back view where you can see where most of the trees are not cut on the screen. You'll see the yellow part you should be located at. We'll keep going. These are the side uh, views of the back house. Most of the trees have been cut down from where they were all the way up to the properties and we have posts throughout the property. Uh, this is the far corner um, right behind uh, 2706 of the entry, and this is also next to the ditch, um, the county of waterways. And we have a post and fence going all, the way, all along that side. Um, this is a more for a panoramic view of the property from that corner. See most of the trees, most of the holes in there. We have here uh, what we're looking at is the outermost, uh, I'd say the northern east corner of the property. And we have uh, where we station some of the goats to eat some of the trees, uh, some of the grass that grows. And this is another panoramic view as we're moving around. On the right hand side is where the previous picture was taken and was going around um, on the uh, right to left. Um, this is the general area where we keep the horses and they walk around in this clear path. Uh, the brim on to your left hand side is the divider between the property and the waterway. Uh, hopefully, I'm not moving too fast at all. So far, we've moved around in, uh, in this form. We've not covered the inside part which is delineated as wetlands and a lot of red oak uh, is in that area. Uh, with permission, we're actually, if we get uh, permission to rezone to the A or RA, we're trying to cut down and clear some of that uh, tree so it's a little bit more accessible. It's too thick to walk through. Uh, this 
is the actual waterway. Now we pulled out trees, tires, bottle, uh, bottle, uh, beer bottles, cans, and also some trash from it that flows from the airport uh, uh, runoff and some of the other properties that are on the outside. Uh, we built a little bridge to encompass the back property. So what you're seeing there is the back half of the 13 acres. It encompasses about 7.5 acres. Uh, and during rain season, that area does not flood, but it stays too wet uh, for any uh, So we're asking that that area actually, if with conditions we can get anything else, we leave that property to be uh, left as conservation. And uh, this actually is the view of where you're, we're going back and facing the property 2757 and 2755, and we make a circle around. Um, I'm just asking to have this proof uh, for my family, for the, our pets, uh, and we're just trying to improve our property. And, and, and I mean, over the years that we've cleared it out, it's changed dramatically from what it used to be. Um, we've had uh, various complaints for the animals, uh, from the uh, EPA to the Department uh, of Agriculture. We cleared uh, for the water quality uh, concerns are our best. We've cleared up uh, the water quality. There's no sign of illnesses or disease in water, and none of the uh, animals actually have none of their feces running into any any type of waterways. Uh, we haven't had any concerns with our septic or our well being polluted at all, and uh, we have uh, documentation for that. We also have documentation from the Environmental Protection Agency that came out to uh, check on the concerns and from the Department of Agriculture for the horses. If there's any uh, more questions, I can ask. Is there any questions from the staff? Um, Scott, what, what, what were all the complaints that you were cleared of? Um, we were cleared for one for having uh, for foot enforcement for having the horses too on the farm uh, on our property where they used to live on, on 2755. They used to um, they used to just raise on our property. Cut down on the grass. Uh, we had complaints uh, from animal control, uh, and we had the environmental protection agency put concerns for the water um, and the disposal of the waste. We had uh, complaints from the Department of Ag for the well-being of the horses, uh, which was cleared. Uh, we've had complaints uh, over our family uh, and how many members uh, live in two houses on the two properties. Uh, the amount of people that uh, come in and out. We've had complaints over our vehicles, how many owners of the vehicles. There's currently uh, three adults, myself, my brother, and my mother, and we own two cars each. Uh, so the amount of vehicles are on the property. We have complaints from uh, uh, go all the way to DFAS about our children and concerns with their safety and their well-being. We have complaints all the way to the service department about uh, harassment. Uh, our family has been in, under fire over the opposition for the the past, mm, I'd say, six months, a heavy <coughs> uh, complaint. Uh, and it, it seems to have spiked since we've tried to rezone the property and get it some situation. We want to go ahead and uh, get this cleared up so we can actually put the fence around the entire property and make sure we have all boundaries checked for we don't have any complaints anymore. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have about a minute and a half left to if anyone wants to speak in favor, anyone else wants to speak in favor? Okay, now we'll open it up uh, for the people to speak against this uh, case. Anyone want to speak against this case? Please state your name and address, ma'am. Uh, my name is Judy Haberkamp, <coughs> 3922 Island Creek Road, Valdosta, Georgia. Um, I think I may have misunderstood. Mr. Callis said that they were not planning on putting horses on this property that they want to have rezoned. Did I misunderstand him? He said that they, I think he said that they would not if it was a problem. No. I think he has one horse and two ponies now. I think he wanted to maintain those. I think it was about okay. cattle and pigs. Okay. A lot of 
want your livestock to put on this additional property he wants to have rezoned? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Also, um, you said on the RA that you would have to require fencing if it was RA. Is that correct? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, of course, uh, my concern is for the welfare of the livestock. But also, um, now that he's changed about the horses, but also I would ask that y'all would consider doing the RA so that he does have to fence in the area that he's wanting to. Also for future use in case he changes his mind and decides he wants to have livestock. That way they would be in a confined area and not roaming out to someone's yard. So I hope y'all will take that into consideration that he would do that. Um, like I said, my, wealth, my thing is for the welfare of the livestock. Um, and also, um, now that he also brought up about in the future maybe building a home, so I guess that ever did come up because of the land and the wetlands, that would be a different subject when that time came up. That's a different thing. Okay. But anyway, that's all I have to say. I appreciate your time and for listening to me. Thank you. Any questions of the presenter? You said you have concerns with livestock. What are your concerns? Well, the size of the property, um, how many horses and goats they would put on that property if it's only a small acreage. Um, <coughs> you know, are they going to have enough room to feed, to move around? Um, would it make a smell if there's too many animals in a combined area? Would there be odor from, you know, various things, species? So. Um, and I want to make sure that they would be taken care of properly. You said you live on Island Creek? Mm -hmm. That's not near this it property? It is not, no. So what is your, what is your concern? <coughs> do you own property near here? No, I do not, but I am with some animal um, rescue groups um, and various into the animal, different things like that. And again, um, just knowing um, from open records, that's all. I just, um, okay. and want, to, want to clarify about Ms. Judy's question about the house. If it's rezoned EA or RA, they will be allowed to have dwellings on the property, and we've gotten certification from the Board of Health that they would have room for at least one septic tank because of the wet soils. So multiple houses, I think, is very much a question, but we have gotten some certification from the experts that they would at least have room for one set to tank if the zoning goes that direction. And that would be entered in, in the plant uh, in the permitting. That's the location, the, yes. Right. But the western side of the property is probably where that would go because that's the drier part of the property. Okay. So that would already be a consideration when you decide if it's VA or RA. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anybody else here willing or uh, wanting to speak against this zoning? Yes, sir. Please come forward, state your name. My name is Clifford McMillan. I live at 2761 Alexandria. I'm the property of you know, South End of these people. Um, <clears throat> I've been here approximately 10 years, and Mr. Cooper owns all the land around it. <laughs> But he told me the land goes frequency on with all that wet land, and nothing could be done with it. If it could, the land goes wouldn't gave it away for next to nothing. She paid nothing for it. And he has property that borders hers. Okay, my property, I'm in a horseshoe. She bought around me, and I'm in a, hor a horseshoe, and these animals are right on my wells. Okay? I've killed numerous poison snakes full of eggs, and he's not telling the truth about how many animals he has. He's got turkeys, he's got pheasants, he's got ducks, he's got chickens. You name it, he's got it. It's a regular Noah's Ark. And I, if the people would have came here, would, they always let me come in here and do their fighting. I, I had a petition, he has it, but they'd be on that street with signed against that. There, I killed a seven foot timber rattler last year full of eggs. Some Spanish people took it, ate it, they cut it up and eggs. Coming for the chickens and the eggs. The chickens roam everywhere, run everywhere, and the snakes are having a, a smorgasbord. I mean, every kind of snake, moccasins, it's full of them out there. They go to your property, they land in your yard, and I've had a stroke. I'm on blood thinner. If I get hit with a snake, I'm dead. They come, I, thank God I have dogs to keep them bait out there, but I have stray cats too that come there and they keep them out. But <clears throat> these people have been encroached on my property since they've been in. My well has been poisoned. I have police reports. 
They dumped concrete in a well on their line there, which the lady next door told me that. She said she'd be a witness, but he's been going to the paper. I don't know if he's been coming. I'll pay you to please go against him. He's, when he's saying he's that, he's lying. No, no personal effect. Sir. Yeah, I have a petition that's stating that these people, he has a copy, and I have pictures of water from floods. That water from the creek, there's three different dump-offs in there. gets over four foot deep in the rainy system. It's been in my house. The land is burned up in the back. So it, when it comes in, they make the road too high, and I'm in a hole. So when that comes, everything that's in there, the feces and everything else, is in that water. The mosquitoes are running rampant because they have holding ponds for these animals. They have buckets where they feed these animals water, and they have... That's dead water. That's drawn water. You can't go out. You, the rain we had, you won't be able to go out. Now, you can't go in it now for the mosquitoes. When summer comes, come to my house and see if you can go in there. It's, it's ridiculous. Why is this, one question, why is this zone a 100-year floodplain if something could be done with this? I don't understand it. It's on the county map, a 100-year floodplain. I, I don't understand it. Professor, anyone have any questions of the presenter? Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, also, also, these horses, I put them in the, when they had them in the front yard, I took these horses home probably 30 times. When they get out in the school bus, loaded, that kids run, that neighbor's run around with children in school buses, speeding up that road. When the school bus flips over and there's a bunch of kids dead in Maine because they've zoned this a farm, I don't know what, who's going to answer that for Rounds County. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak against <coughs> this request? Anyone else like to speak against? Okay, I'll turn it over to the board. And any questions of the staff or any questions of anyone? Jason, would you open up the map again that shows the actual? <coughs> The delineation between the yeah. so, so the area that's in yellow, that's the only non that's the only non The the non area is actually more around that central core. This yellow area goes into the wetlands probably about an acre. This is about just over two acres within that property that he's called out. And I would say that's consistent with kind of the active use area that I saw today. And so what is what is this map telling us that? What is this? What is, I mean, in, I'm looking at the, mm -hmm. at the recommendations and I'm trying to understand where, sure. is, where is the distinction between the two zones, the two districts, um, conservation and uh, RA? If you potentially choose to rezone the property based on the wetland boundary, that would be the survey that we showed you earlier. If you choose to that's right, the update one. If you choose to rezone it based on this map, this line here, I would say a fence covers this acre here. And then to the north, this is unfenced area. You can tell where they've done some uh, thinning of the property, mainly the underbrush. They look all the larger trees and the smaller trees. So this area is fenced. This area is used, for example, today, you know, most of the animals were in this area. There were three goats that were tied up, you know, somewhere in this area here. So I just show this to you because to me, based on my site visit today, I think this is a more accurate depiction of where they actually are using the property, these two acres. If you were to go with my original recommendation, um, which is this map, it would be everything on the east side, basically that is wetland will remain conservation. Everything that is not wetland will remain RA. Um, but I would be willing to compromise on that based on that active use area. I feel like that is depicting where they are using it. And what I also like about it is it gets the area directly behind their residences where it's fenced rather than getting a little bit behind their neighbors. Like if you look on the map, this is Mr. Cliff's property. So I like the fact that this would all still remain conservation and the use area would go up and away from these neighbors rather than kind of closer to them. So, I would be open for either one, but based on my site visit this afternoon, I think that second map, in my opinion, was a, a better depiction of where some active use area would be. And those uses are allowed uh, in the wetlands. You can have um, livestock that grazes. 
um, which is what they call it in our regs. Um, pasturing of livestock isn't allowed when using a wetland, provided that it doesn't find a riparian wetland, you don't disturb the soil profiles, and you use best management practices for agriculture. So I did clear that with the engineer, but I feel like that was my initial recommendation, and I would be willing to work with uh, the commission on this yellow area because it's already fenced in. They do appear to be maintaining it, uh, and I feel like the two acres would get it further away from those residences rather than possibly put some acres right behind, especially Mr. Cliff there to the south. Yes, ma'am. Two point two is what I think they they clocked at. And just to be clear, this being a conservation zone, you cannot actually have livestock in a conservation zone. That's right. So the reason for the zone is to allow livestock. That's right. So the next step below that would be RA, not the EA would be a lot more permissible as far as livestock. Yes, ma'am. The, their original proposal was for 13 acres of EA, and that was based on their choice. But I advise them that I'm probably going to come back with some kind of combination of RA and conservation based on the concerns from the neighbors and the comp plan being conservation. And so that's what I want to come back with. But what I really didn't understand until today was, okay, where is that boundary line? It was a safe bet for me to go wetlands versus RA. Now that I've learned, okay, you can't have some pasturing in wetlands. I'm not comfortable rezoning all 13 acres, but I would be comfortable trying to find some kind of compromise based on the concerns from the neighbors. Sorry, I'm asking. Um, but so the red lines that you have right now, so the, the, the western boundary of that yellow area actually is the eastern boundary of the applicants. Lots. Yes. Both of these lots. Yes. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Miss Cowell owns both of those lots, and if that were the zoning map, then the yellow area would be RA, and then everything outside of that, the remaining 11 acres, 9, 10, 11 acres, would be conservation. And then with the RA, the requirement would be that this area would need to be fenced in. Yes, ma'am. It says um, the parcel has to be fenced in an outdoor track, an exercise yard, or a pasture yard, in my opinion, shall be separately fenced. Anyone else have any questions? Do you have a plan of this yellow area? Commissioner, I don't. I don't. That was something that was drawn by Mr. Wilmer that I verified on site today. Um, the only plot that I have shows the wells. Those, we actually do have measurements. I know it's hard to see here, but each one of those line segments actually does have a link to it, um, but that has not been picked on a wood survey. So we're going to require, if, if we were to do this, would we require a plot to be prepared? Within, within the next two weeks, it probably would be some cost to the applicant to go out there, but that's what the engineer and I spoke about today, was requiring that survey plot to be updated to kind of show, show that area. Oh, okay. Are there any issues with the We've got back from them beyond that recommendation. They tested um, a well on the property just for um, call form, or people call form to make sure the water quality was still good and it came back satisfactory. And then they tested the property for a potential septic tank, where I believe that they said you could fit a septic tank on the property if you brought in probably a, a more expensive mounted system. But you could still probably could serve this 13 acres to probably support one one house. So beyond the conservation concerns for land mill ma'am, most of our wetlands regulations are actually regulated by um, engineering and EPD and DNR. Uh, the Department of Ag, the Department of uh, Human Services would get involved in water quality and just animal care. So the EPD has no concerns of any type of uh, contamination in the wetlands? Um, no, ma'am, they, uh, they did not recommend any corrective measures. I uh, recommended closure of their initial complaints. And what they, to me, what I feel like they specifically screened for was, was their pollution from where the animals are into any waterways. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else? Anyone else? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll turn it over for a recommendation to the commission. Chairman, I move we recommend denial of the petition to the County Commission. I'll say. All in favor, raise your right hand, please. All against, same sign. Abstaining. Okay. So it's a recommended denial, 4 to 2, with one abstention. Is that right, Mr. Hartel? Four two one. Four two one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I can get you through that um, when you get some more. Who made the motion? Ed and John. No, who made the case? Who voted against the motion? Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jason. Yes, sir. Thank you.